While there were many important players in the Industrial Revolution in the United States, three were the most important or the most well-known. The first was Cornelius Vanderbilt, known for his influence in the railroad industry. He was born in 1794 on Staten Island in New York. He served in the United States Army where he earned the nickname the Commodore. Vanderbilt began in the steamboat industry, transporting shipments around the East Coast. In 1867, he gained control of the New York Central Railroad. Then, in 1873, he connected New York City and Chicago via railroad lines. He eventually designed a railroad system with organized schedules and procedures that was adopted by all railroads. Previously, everyone had their own schedules and procedures, which made everything very confusing and frustrating. Unlike his fellow industrialists, Vanderbilt was not a very terrible man and did not believe in philanthropy. Besides his immense railroad system, his only legacy became Vanderbilt University in Tennessee, for which he left $1 million for construction. At the time of his death, Vanderbilt was worth $100 million, which would now be equal to about $185 billion. John D. Rockefeller was most well known for his hand in the oil industry. He was born in 1839 in New York. Rockefeller started off in the trade industry with his co-owned company, Clark & Rockefeller. In 1863, Clark & Rockefeller purchased half interest of a refinery company. In 1865, it purchased operating control of Cleveland's largest refinery. In 1870, the Standard Oil Company was founded. By 1872, it had bought out most other refineries in Cleveland. Rockefeller believed businesses need structure in order to survive. He would often buy out businesses, which led to the first monopoly. Unlike Vanderbilt, Rockefeller donated about $53 million in charity. He financed the construction of the University of Chicago, which started in 1989 and finished in 1901. Also in 1901, he built the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research, now known as Rockefeller University, which still holds a strong influence in medicine and medicinal practices. In 1913, he funded the creation of the Rockefeller Foundation, which promotes the well-being of humanity around the world. When he died in 1937, Rockefeller was worth $900 million, which is now equal to about $34 billion, making him the richest man in American history. The third giant of the Industrial Revolution was Andrew Carnegie, who was most influential in the steel industry. Born in 1835, Carnegie and his family emigrated from Scotland in 1837 to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In 1853, when Carnegie was a teenager, Pennsylvania railroads built telegraph lines to connect its railroad communications. Tom Scott hired Carnegie to be his personal telegraph operator, which led to Carnegie learning business from both Scott and J. Edgar Thompson, the president of Pennsylvania Railroads. In 1871, Carnegie built a Bessemer-type steel plant. The Bessemer process was to melt iron down and inject oxygen, making the iron more malleable. In 1875, this plant, the Edgar Thompson Steelworks, became a big player in the steel industry. In 1901, Carnegie sold Carnegie Steel to J.P. Morgan for $4,800 million, a sale now worth $310 billion. Out of the three, Carnegie was the most philanthropic and encouraged all businessmen to donate to charity, which he outlined in his essay, Gospel of Wealth. He donated an estimated $350 million to different charitable endeavors. In 1895, the Carnegie Museums of Pittsburgh were constructed. At the time of its construction, it housed a library, a music hall, an art gallery, and a museum of natural history. In 1905, he financed the Carnegie Free Library in South Carolina, which is one of 14 Carnegie-funded libraries in the state. In 1905, he founded the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching, a system of pensions for retiring professors. It later became the Teachers Insurance and Annuity Association, which still exists as the TIAA CREF. Carnegie was big on libraries. He funded 1,400 library grants in the United States and 660 library grants in Great Britain and Ireland. He also funded the construction of the Carnegie Institute in Washington, solely for the purpose of scientific research. At the time of his death in 1919, Carnegie was worth $372 million and would now be worth $75 billion.